Good morning and welcome to St. Paul's. I am Destiny and I will serve as your liturgist this morning. As we worship Christ, let us be reminded that today is known as the Baptism of the Lord Sunday. Songs and scripture readings will appear on our media screen. And if you haven't already done so, please silence your cell phones. Now please join me in reading the call to worship. In the very beginning, God separated the darkness and the light. God called the light day and the darkness God called night. We were once people who dwelled in darkness, but God has given us the true light, Jesus Christ. God has blessed us and adopted us as God's own beloved children through the sacrament of baptism. The water of baptism brings us healing and reconciliation. It is a symbol of nourishment this day is the day of the remembrance of Jesus' baptism. As we hear the words of his baptism, let us be reminded of our own adoption by God and celebrate the joyous connection to the Almighty God. You may be, be seated. seated. Let us pray. Creator God, when everything first began, water became a symbol of refreshing, of washing away, of renewing. Through the waters of creation, you brought forth abundant life. 
We have gathered this day to remember Jesus' baptism, how your spirit proclaimed that he was your beloved son, in whom you were very well pleased. Our spirits resound with that proclamation. In his baptism, Jesus' ministry was initiated. He dedicated his life to you completely and without reservation. Help us to dedicate our lives to you, to offer our best for you, to be of service to you by serving in your world. As we have lifted before you the names of people near and dear to us who need your healing touch and your tender mercies, we have also lifted ourselves up as people in need of your grace. In our world, there is war, oppression, hunger, and alienation. We have not been good stewards of the world. We have not cared for one another. Heal us in this world, Lord. Renew us with your life-giving waters and reaffirm our baptisms as your children. Let us go forth to be people of peace and mercy, for we ask this in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Please join me in saying the prayer of confession. We are incredibly stubborn, O oh Lord. We have entered the season in which your light has been given to the world. Your blessings have been poured out on the world. 
and yet all we can think about is our own problems, our own needs, our own desires. Help us to desire you, Lord. Help us to yearn for your presence. Pour your baptismal waters over us again, cleansing us from our self-pity and arrogance. Nourish and heal us so that we may joyfully serve you. Wash away our jealousy, greed, and all negative thoughts and behaviors that stand in the way of our truly being the people you have created us to be. Again, let us receive the blessings offered in creation in the birth and baptism of Jesus. And in the ministry of the saints of light, we ask this in Jesus' name, amen. for the gospel reading and our short praise song. This morning's verse comes from Matthew chapter 3, verses 13 through 17. Then Jesus came from Galilee to join to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. And when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, suddenly the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, this is my son, the beloved, with whom I am well pleased. words of assurance. The love of God is always offered to us, freely, joyfully, for all eternity. Rejoice, dear friends. This is the good news of our Lord. Amen. Amen. You may now be seated.
I don't know if it's me or maybe it's the weather, but it seems like y'all awfully melancholy this morning. It is not uh, that of the Spirit of God. Good morning, beloved. Oh, you can do better than that. I heard you shouting at the Lakers yesterday and uh, all of the football teams and so forth, and you come in here and say, good morning to God. Good morning, beloved. Good morning. That's a little bit better. For those of you that are taking notes, get your pens and paper ready. This is day 12 of 2020. Day 12. How many of you made New Year's resolutions? How many of you have already broken them? Wow. How many of you are clean from sin in these 12 days? Well, the third day after Christmas, the third Sunday the third Sunday But yet, the first Sunday after Epiphany. But it is the Sunday of our Lord's baptism. New birth, new baptism, new year, new hope, new praise. God forgiving of the past. The gifts of the Magi was received last week, the lighting of the hope and Jesus coming in the flesh. The welcoming of God in this place. The hope of righteousness of those who believe in the Son and the Father and in the Holy Spirit, but most of all, our Savior. The scripture reminds us this week, in Isaiah 42, it says, God's servant will set everything right. In the Psalm of David 29, it says, Give it unto the Lord, O you mighty ones. Give unto the Lord the glory and the strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty. I pause for a second and ask you, how many know the song, O Thousand Tongues? It was just sung. Do you know the words? Oh, my, my, my. We got some teaching to do this, this year, Michael. Celebration. As the psalmist tells us, give it unto the Lord. And then Acts 10, it says, To him all prophets witnesses that through his name, Whoever believes in him will receive remission of sin. You see, the newness of a chance to survive and to get it right within God's hope and promise, the love, the grace, and the mercy. His ascending. But beloved, you are reminded. You've stumbled and fallen in 2019. But 2020, you have an opportunity 
to get it right. Let us center our hearts, bow our heads, hear the Spirit of the Lord, the whisper. O oh, gracious and almighty God, as we come to you this morning, we come broken and tattered, <coughs> questioning and doubt, mystery, but yet God, we come before you asking for the serenity and the peace, but yet the guidance, the guidance of which we need from you through word, through witnessing, through that of the newness of this day. God, forgive us. Forgive us, O oh Lord, for all that we have trespassed and trespassed it against. But yet, God, let us forgive as you have forgiven us. Humble our hearts, our minds, our bodies, and our spirits that we can be infused with the newness of the sun. And yet, God, as we sit in the light, that we know the directions of which you will lead. Love us, O oh God, through your grace and your mercy. And all who believe says amen. amen. Last week I gave you four R's in order to help you kick off your 2020. In order for you to understand that you need to have the reflection of history. Looking to see where have you been and where you are looking to go. Looking to say that I've made it these days, months, and years. But yet pinching yourself to say thank you God for all that you have, all that you will, and all that you are doing for me. Then it's the receptiveness. The willingness to receive the gratefulness and the thankfulness of which God is given. The thanks for the thanks living. For you that has given, has been saved from, and delivered. Then it's the repetitiveness that characterizes you to do it again and to do it again. The reading of the word, the believing of the word, the trusting of the word, the living of the word, the loving of the word, that you may come to forgive through the word. And then it's the resolve, a firm determination of what's before you. The question what are you doing to make 2020 different? Yes, yeah, you've heard the word this morning of the gospel. It reminds us of the commission. The commission is that to make disciples, helping people to hear the gospel and to receive their Savior, Jesus Christ, believing in God in the flesh that he died for our sins. Being baptized means to be witnessing and testifying. Then it's that of teaching, striving to continuously teach the truth of what God's Word is all about. God's Word 
It's about us having that connection, that relationship with God. It is being that of the oneness with God. God is with us. My Bible tells me 216 times it is repeated that Christ is with us. The baptism of Jesus of a sinless man in the flesh. So let me ask you, what are you doing? You have some things that you've gone through this week. But you also have done some things to hurt someone. But you need forgiveness. The forgiveness is that of the baptism. We're here this morning that we've heard the scriptures of which destiny has read. We've heard the scriptures reminding us baptism. 23 times it is mentioned in the New Testament. Acts and Matthew, Luke and Hebrews and 1 Peter. Why? Until we get it right. John the Baptist says, I baptize you with water for repentance, but after me will come the one who is more powerful than I. I, whose sandals I am not fit to carry, will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and the fire. The whittling fork is in his hands and he will clear his threshold. And the wheats and the barns will burn up and the chaff will be unquenchable of the fire, the baptism. But John wondered why, why am I to baptize him. The baptism of which symbolized our association with Jesus Christ. The baptism that we must obey the commands of which we're given. Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan. Oh, I can tell you about the Jordan. Been there. Been there. And in being there, I was asked to baptize a man that was on the tour with us. And I says, yes, I'll be honored to do that, but I, I too came to be baptized here in the Jordan. And I was reminded that as I step into the water, oh, how cold, how deep, that God is with me. There is a gentleman from New Jersey, which I'll never forget. His wife says, I've been praying for him for our 20 some odd years to be baptized to accept God. We come on this trip and he asked, what about now? She was ever so elated that he is now saying yes. I was not the only pastor on the bus, but it was the thing that I was asked, would I do it? And I said, yes. Another family that was there, two adults and two children, says, we want to be renewed as well. Would you do us as well? Sure. 
ended up baptizing 17 people. 17 people. Renewals and nude. So I can understand how John, in a sense, felt what gives me the right. But God says, if I am with you and you are with me and we are to one and all, then you are me and I am ye. So therefore, I have commissioned you to be my disciple. So no matter where you go beyond these walls, you are that with me. John had to understand it was a symbolism that Jesus came in the flesh as a man not without any sin. No sin. But yet to know what our sin was all about. As soon as Jesus was baptized and went up into the water, he was cleansed anew. New spirit, new hope, new faith. But all he had to do more so than anything was to believe in God the Father. Believe. Beloved, baptism is an outward, an outward symbol of a reflection. God is more concerned with your inner being. But you need to purge some things. But as Jesus came out of the water, a voice from heaven says, This is my son of whom I love, and I am well pleased. Beloved, God loves each and every one of you. You are that son, that daughter. But yet, there's some things that we need to purge. We need to purge on the line. We need to purge on the talk about. We need to purge on the gossip. We need to purge on walking on and walking over those that are our neighbors and our brothers. Our brother's keeper is where we're supposed to be. Stop the brokenness. Stop the hurt and pain of which you are inflicting on each other. Stop it. Jesus is that of the new writer of the story of what God has done and what God is doing for us. That's what your baptism is all about. Baptism comes from the Greek word baptismo, which simply means is to identify or to be made with one. There's a real baptism which involves actually being a person with something or someone. That's where God wants us, to be with him in relationship. But we have to be in relationship with ourselves in order to be in relationship with him. But there are some things we need to purge. Some hurt, some pain, some baggage. We're not just here for the ritual. We're not just here for the ceremony. Wesley reminds us 
in the United Methodist Church that you could be submerged, poured upon, or sprinkled. There are some organizations of the religious sector says that the only baptism is that of submerging. The Bible reminds us, ye too can be dipped, but the essence of your baptism is that that you are a believer in God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Somebody ought to say amen. It's about your repentance. It is not about just being wet. It is about that of a confession and repentance of your sin. It is about that of being witnesses and disciples. It is about that of being that reflectiveness of God. Through faith, God's grace. A loving one another. Some time ago I started asking you, how are you? How are you? Everybody's immediate response is what? Oh, I'm fine. The Bible reminds us that we need to stop lying to ourselves and one another. But in one of your R's, it tells us that we need to be ready to be that of a receiver as well, does it not? When I ask you, how are you doing? Am I ready to receive? what you're ready to give upon. It was interesting this morning that several times I've been asked, how am I? Destiny came up and said, Pastor, how are you? And here's a hug. Diana Bruno asked, Pastor, how are you doing? Miss Cat says, how are you? Then she says, you can tell me, Pastor, I won't tell. <laughs> I've heard the stories over the last several weeks of even your neighbors that are sitting next to you. Trials, tribulations, heart, and pain. Something to eat, nothing to eat. Some with heat and some without heat. Some with water and some without water. Personal and medical conflicts. Strifes of which you've been carrying. Today is a reminder of Jesus' baptism. A newness, a new, new reflection, new refreshing. You got it in your hand. You have it in your hand. Or it should be. Not in your pocket and not sitting on the pew. But in your hand. And this is the first time that I'm going to tell you, at any time you can get up, walk up, and put it in, in the fountain that is before you. Drop your sin into the pool and know that you know it's a new start, a new beginning. A refreshing aspect of coming closer with God. Be 
Because if you don't cleanse yourself and believe in God and to believe that he is with you no matter what. But you first need to let it go. Paul says, John verbally baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him. That is on Christ Jesus. The water of baptism is a sculpture that is called, that what John is telling us that comes as a symbolic aspect with that of death and the resurrection, but yet fulfilling the promise of the Father in heaven and the Holy Spirit. John tells us that the scriptures, when Jesus comes, he will baptize you with the real baptism and not a symbol. Somebody ought to say thank you. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and the fire. Why? John reminds us that the baptism represents the inward charge and it is not symbolic. God is concerned with what's inside of you. What's inside of you that comes out in the image, the image of God. If you are supposed to be that reflection of God, be that. In the newness, in the love, in the repentance. That of new life, new hope, new love. Because the grace of God is upon you. Understand the public confession, but also understand if you can't confess it to yourself, you can't confess it to God. When are you going to tell God your deepest, darkest secret? When are you going to ask for forgiveness? When are you going to just drop it and let it go? When are you going to serve as God is asking you to serve? When are you going to do your stewardship as God has asked you to do your stewardship? You don't have to wait on the invitation. You can volunteer at any time because God has already set the commission. Be that of a disciple, be that of a witness. Be that of a teacher. Be that in the likeness of God. Be that of hope. Be that of the Spirit. The Bible does not say that we are saved through our faith, our grace, 
but yet or the axe. But the Bible does say God's grace. God's grace is your reward. God's grace. God's love. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. You are the sons and the daughters of God. God is pleased with you. God is pleased with you. He knows your hurt, your pain, your stripes, your turmoil. He knows about your leprosy. But he says, through it all, I can cure you. If you believe in me, but you got to give it to God, but you give it to God wholeheartedly. We got to, as the old folks used to say, shuck and jive, stop it. If you're going to make a commitment, make your commitment. There is a young medical student one day was late to get his assignment from his professor. He had to do so much volunteer work and be part of that community. It was a college town, and being that of a college town, you know of all the chicanery that goes on. So this young medical student had to do some volunteer work in the clinic. The clinic of where everybody came to get their STDs taken care of. But he had been going to work on that assignment. He was late getting there. So there was a line out the door. So eventually he kind of maneuvered his way all the way up to the front desk. And he says, I'm here to see the doctor. And the receptionist says, so is everybody else, get in line. He says, no, you don't understand. She says, oh yeah, I understand. That's why everybody else is here. Contamination. After a while, he finally convinced her that he was there to assist. Assist. Are we not supposed to be assisting? but we have to be on time, but yet we need to cleanse ourselves in order to be cleansed, to cleanse someone else, to accept someone else. Neighbor, try hard to love me and not to judge me. 
try hard to love me and not to judge me. Despite of who's in the line and what you've done. Forgiveness. Forgiveness. New hope, new prosperity. You're only 12 days in. But through it all, my 22,902 days, what are yours? Through it all, I made it this far. The altar is open. The baptism is there for you. The lighting of the way is possible. All you have to do is take that sin that's in your hand, drop it into the bowl, and remembering your baptism, of knowing that the newness of life, hope, and prosperity is there for us all. But yet, we have to understand, believe, and trust that we want to be in the oneness with God. The oneness with God. That's where your victory comes from. Stop playing the pity party. Stop thinking that you are a victim when you are of that of victory. A kind word, a prayer, a smile, a hug. What is going to be your image for 2020? with you and God. your sin off to God, your baggage off to God. 
your dirty laundry off to God. I hope that you have, that you can start anew starting today. He formed you, He filled you, He's given you a function, but most of all, you are my beloved, you are my beloved, a witch, I am happy, honored, belated in loving you for who that you are. God loves you for who that you are. So starting this mid-morning of 2020, forgiving, Know your history, but know where you're going, where you want to go. I dropped it in the water. It died. I came up out of the water in the newness of the Spirit of God. New life, new hope, new prosperity, new joy, new rest. As long as you have your joy and your rest, One more. Love you for being loved. Forgive all that it has been cast upon you. But from now on, what you think of me is none of my business. What you think of me is none of my business. It's what God thinks of me. What God thinks of me. That way there, if you take that with you, Nothing or no one can burden you down. Because I don't have to worry about what you think. That does not excuse me from being your brother's keeper. Loving one another for who that you are. But most of all, loving you for whom that you are. The love of God for the people of God. Amen. Somebody give God a hand praise. Because God says, or God does, God has more money than you can ever think of. Think about that. But he has given you an aspect of management. to support 
your brothers, your sisters, your community. But through that, he doesn't want you doing it out of obligation. He wants you doing it because of your heart. Yes, it's offering time, but God wants you to do it from your heart, not you thinking it's obligation. Beloved, it's a new year. And in your stewardship campaign this year, you need to make a decision on how you want to utilize that, of what you can and cannot do. But don't do it just because. Do it because your heart delivers you to do it. Amen. Amen. Just another day in LA. How could I ask for more? You are generous, O oh God, from the moment our life began and even to the grave. You have claimed us as your own, and nothing can erase your love and embrace. Our gratitude overflows, yet that love and embrace also comes with a calling to proclaim and live your justice even to the ends of the earth. Grant us the courage to live adventurously for you, proclaiming and living your justice wherever we find ourselves and wherever liberation has yet to be made real. May the gifts we offer you this day be but the beginning of what we shall offer you with our lives and with our witness in the world. Amen. The battle is won, 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 the death. Thank God for Jesus, our Father for your Let us stand. Son. and mighty God, we thank you for the hearts, the givers. We thank you for these monetary gifts. God, we ask that you just bless them and multiply them to be utilized in your service, your mission, and as a resource of all that we do and all that we can do for our brothers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. If you have not registered your attendance, register your attendance for me, please, so that we can keep track of what's there. Since we, since Bonnie and I have tables one, twos, and threes to do this coming week, amen? And you are our tables one, twos, and threes. Also, I was just informed uh, that Cynthia Kuzman needs some help today through Tuesday in order to move, starting today. 
Uh, it's a local move of packing and so forth, so if anybody can uh, render any help and service to her, uh, see Miss Ellie. I'm going to put it on you. See Miss Ellie. Beloved, we have to be there. Mr. Hightower, it's good that you came to visit with us this morning. Hope to see you again since you're a new neighbor. And if there's anything that we can do as a family, we're here for you. Amen? Has everybody met Mr. Hightower? Mr. Hightower. Randy is up doing double duty. Jackman's been doing triple duty. Um, our voices, our voices, our strumming, and our drumming. Amen. Amen. We say thank you. Stepping up and stepping out. I won't say that you ran from the mic this morning, but good job. Felita, good job. Solomon, stepping up, stepping out. Amen. Miss Cat, Jackie, keep Jackie in your prayer. She kind of hurt her back a little bit this morning. Our campus uh, patrol, thank you. Our recycler, thank you. Amen. These are just servants that are being done. Destiny, thank you for being on my right arm. Amen. I'm gonna put a, I'm, I'm not gonna put any pressure on you, but I'm gonna put some pressure on you. Destiny's told me that uh, this year she's gonna she's gonna do a, she's gonna deliver a sermon for us. Amen. That's what mission and ministry is all about. Tuli, you up next. You up next. You ready? We'll get you to do liturgy first, okay? Beloved, put on your heart to make a difference for yourself in order to make a difference for God this year. No, it hasn't been easy. We've had our trials, we've had our tribulations. But united, we have our strength. United, we have our love. United, we have our justice. United, we have a voice. Let's be that with God. Be that with God, in God, through God. Amen? Let us stand. Let us put our hands in God's hand. Gracious and almighty God, as we reach up to touch your hand, your hand, and our hand, God, we start afresh and anew this day. We've dropped the old and we come out afresh because of you. God be with us this week as we take it a day at a time, a day of celebration, a day of thanksgiving, a day of thanksgiving, a day of love and a day of forgiveness, a day of serenity and a day of peace a day of healing and a day of victory. We thank you, O oh God, for receiving us. But yet, God, as you have planted the seed, help us to cultivate the seed in and through our beloved Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen? 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 Amen. Speaking of seeds, I need each and every one of you here next Sunday.
because we have a seed to plant on behalf of God. The only way that you're going to be able to receive your seeds for the coming 2020 is to be here next Sunday. Because otherwise, you're going to miss out on a blessing. Oh, what, what lunch? Oh, and lunch. There's a blessing okay, and okay. lunch in it, Paul. And, yeah. uh, and lunch. Amen? But more so than anything, we want you here to receive your seed, of which we are going to give you to cultivate. And I know you only thinking, I don't, I don't need no plants. It's more than that. It's more than that. Trust me. Also, there's a, yeah, I'm going to give it away, Jackie. There's a bulletin board in the North X. Hashtag, are you ready? That bulletin board is also a challenge board to see how much you're going to pay attention in order to receive your reward. Jackie and I won't tell you what it is, but it's, it's something that you'll like or something that you can use at one time or another or share with someone else in the blessings of God. Amen? Amen. Therefore, this day, be that in the newness of God, the blessings of God, the grace of God. Go in peace, go in victory. Amen.